Now that uh, the Constitution has been approved by Congress, it had to be sent off to the states uh, to be ratified. Now, the Articles had proclaimed themselves to be perpetual. Read the text of the Articles, and it says it's a perpetual union of these states. And the Articles provided a means for their own amendment, namely the unanimous consent of the state legislatures. Well, now, these people knew perfectly well they couldn't get the unanimous approval of all the state legislatures. So they set nine states as the goal, and they laid the decision into the hands of a specially elected convention. It was ratified by using its own ratification procedure. If you look in Article 7 of the Constitution, here's what you find. The ratification of the conventions of nine states shall be sufficient for the establishment of this Constitution between the states so ratifying the same. First place note that it is not being submitted to the state legislatures, but to conventions elected in the states for the specific purpose of considering this Constitution. Uh, this Constitution should have been submitted to the state legislatures, not to special conventions. Uh, the truth is, however, that the framers were afraid that legislatures would not ratify it. After all, it was going to take a lot of power away from the state legislatures and lodge it in the Congress. And then I think a lot of people felt that uh, approval by a convention that was specially elected by the people for this purpose uh, would give it a kind of authenticity and a sounder basis uh, for the new government that it created. The other question is, why nine states? And the answer is, it's the old problem of the big states and the little states. At least some of the small states were going to be necessary in order to get this thing adopted, so that the big states could not overwhelm the small states. Now, what do you suppose was contemplated uh, for the four states that might not have ratified it? That leaves four states out, doesn't it? Now, what would they have been doing, dangling on the end of it, sitting out trying to go it alone, as it were? Well, the question never came up because uh, it was ratified uh, by all the states eventually. Uh, not immediately, but eventually. Uh, well, they got away with it. The Constitution was reported to the Congress by the convention shortly after it was signed. It was signed on September 17th. Uh, there were 55 people altogether who had attended. At the end, when they were signing everything, there were 42 still present, and of the 42, 39 signed it. Three of them declined to sign. Now, Congress was not very enthusiastic. It would mean its own death, uh, but there was surprisingly little opposition either to the signing or to the procedure uh, from the Congress or from the state legislatures. Now, I've always thought, why didn't the Congress, why didn't the state legislatures object more fully uh, to the procedure that was being thrust upon them. But, uh, you know, one of the interesting features is the willingness of the state legislatures to go along. Point of fact, most of the members of the Philadelphia Convention were now elected as members of the state ratifying conventions. Well, it's in the hands now of state conventions. Uh, and uh, most of the time, the state conventions uh, had no way of knowing what was going on in the other state conventions. Communication was slow and difficult. The fastest means of communication on land was the horse. Given all that limitation, the necessary ninth ratification was received within eight months, which I think is a remarkably uh, short time. In New York, you had an anti-federalist governor in George Clinton, and he led the fight against ratification and brought all the governor's prerogatives to bear in trying to defeat it. The leader on the other side, pro-ratification, was Alexander Hamilton. And he mobilized James Madison, who was living in New York at the time, and Justice Jay uh, to help him in producing something we call the Federalist Papers. He planned the assignments. He arranged for publication of the essays in a New York newspaper, and he put the book together. Hamilton did 51 of the papers, Madison 29, and Jay did five of them. 
both Madison and Hamilton uh, produced an essay every three or four days from October 1787 to May of 1788. And indeed, in May of 88, they published a bound volume. Incredible. People say of the Federalist Papers that it's probably the best book on government ever written and published uh, in the United States. It's certainly the most noteworthy book on the Constitution. It had an enormous readership, not merely in New York, but throughout the, uh, the states. As New York debated whether to approve or not, word came that New Hampshire had approved making the ninth state and that Virginia had approved making 10 states. And of course, was New York to stay out all by itself? The tipping point may have come when the delegates from the city of New York threatened to secede from the state of New York if the state did not ratify the Constitution. We look back and say, oh, well, of course, they all approved it. They did all approve it, but only reluctantly and with narrow, narrow votes. In the Electoral College, uh, Washington was elected unanimously, and uh, Adams was elected as vice president. The government took effect on March the 4th, 1789. And Washington, for reasons of communication and transportation, uh, was not inaugurated till April the 30th. And he took the oath on the front steps of the federal building in New York. And after he had taken the oath, he added the phrase, so help me God, which has been there ever since. Well, the new government went into effect with these 11 states. The other two states came in much later. North Carolina, which had voted 69% against, came in in November 21st, 1789. And Rhode Island, which had been 92% against, didn't come in until May 29th, 1790, over a year after the government had gone into effect and two years after the ninth ratification. So the Constitution was set up, agreed to, authenticated in 11 states and was put in operation. What it lacked was a Bill of Rights. And uh, there had been so much talk about a Bill of Rights uh, that it had to be a key issue in the first Congress that was assembled. And we'll talk about the Bill of Rights next time we get together.